Uh, good morning to, to everyone. And I am Borja Marquez. I am the son of Dr. Marquez and Dr. Lopez Tejon. This is one of my first weeks here, and I'm very glad to be presenting the, the Congress. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our scientific Congress, Pregnancy by Assisted Reproductive Techniques in Cancer Survivors. This is a growing social need. A few years ago, <clears throat> at Institute Marquez, we decided that to be able to keep our goal of excellence in clinical care, it was mandatory to give a multidisciplinary reproductive counseling to cancer survivor patients. This is the only way to give their chance to, to reach their goal of having a baby in a safe way. Now, we are providing our experience to oncologic committees all around the globe to give their cancer survival patients an efficient and safe reproductive counseling and treatment. I would like also to thank the Spanish societies of medical oncology, radiotherapeutic oncology, and gynecologists and obstetrics for their support and endorsement to this Congress. And also, I would like to thank our international speakers and chairmen for joining us today and giving us the latest updates in cancer survivor reproductive approach. Thank you very much. Now, our uh, scientific di director, Alex Garcia Faura, will continue. Well, thank you, Dr. Marquez, for your introduction. Uh, I'm Dr. Garcia Faura. I'm the current uh, scientific director and uh, the Oncofertility Unit Director at Institute Marquez. And well, my clinical background has been uh, mainly focused on breast cancer surgery for the last 20 years. And a little bit later, I started uh, to work on uh, Oncofertility as a, a consultant. Well, 25 years ago, when I attended for the first time a tumors committee, uh, as a student, of course, I discovered that it was great to have specialists from different areas related to cancer joining and working together once a week uh, to talk one by one all the patients that uh, were attended at the, at the hospital and with a multidisciplinary approach. And at that time, uh, we already had some uh, fertility counselors that came occasionally to the committee and started uh, asking for permission to do uh, quite uh, strange or unusual things to our oncological patients, such as uh, putting the ovaries in a different position before radiotherapy or uh, doing a laparoscopy to remove some ovarian tissue or sometimes a whole ovary for freezing. And still more difficult, they asked the committee, the tumors committee, to give them a three, four week delay before chemotherapy to try to freeze some oocytes. And it was difficult. Of course, there was at that time very little scientific evidence on what they were trying to do. Uh, we know that among, especially among young patients with cancer, uh, survival at the, at the time was lower, was quite poor. And of course, uh, well, uh, this uh, fertility consultant just uh, worked hard to make us understand that that was the only occasion, the only opportunity for the patient to try to preserve that, the fertility and that it was a right, you know, that they had the right to try it. So 10 years later, uh, fertility preservation is a clinical reality. There were special interest groups on fertility preservation in most of uh, national and international uh, scientific societies and uh, of course they have been able to achieve a higher degree of scientific evidence of on what they do 
and uh, well, they have even created uh, guidelines for clinicians and for counseling, patient counseling. But of course, this increase in fertility preservation and of course the increase of cancer survival in young patients, which is fantastic, has led to a new growing social need, a new problem, if we want to say it's a problem or it's an opportunity, which is that all these patients that survived and that preserved their fertility now want to deliver, want to get pregnant and deliver. And again, we need to go back to the tumor com committees and try to tell the committee that we need to start doing strange things with no scientific evidence to try to allow these patients to get pregnant and deliver. Of course, uh, I remember the first time that I took a breast cancer case to a tumor committee to get the permission to do an IVF treatment. And uh, we spent 40 minutes talking about the patient's age. So that day, we didn't talk about cancer. We didn't talk about the effects of pregnancy on cancer or the effects of cancer on pregnancy. We spent 40 minutes talking why did we want to get a 48-year-old patient pregnant. That's the only subject that we treated during 40 minutes. So again, uh, we need to try to get higher scientific evidence. Of course, it would be great to create specific interest group on cancer survivor counseling and treatment as we did many years ago on fertility preservation. And uh, well, try to get some guidelines to give the right counseling to those patients and tell them the risks and benefits of getting pregnant after cancer treatment treatment. So some of these uh, pioneers that went to, to the committees 20 years ago or 15 years ago uh, here with us today as speakers and uh, chairman willing to share their experience and their expertise uh, with us, each one with a different background. We have speakers that work on mainly on fetal medicine, on gynecology and obstetrics, on the breast cancer surgery, on fertility preservation, radiotherapy, medical oncology. So please welcome uh, them and thank you very much to all of us for joining us today. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two little or not that little changes today. The first one is Dr. Montagut, uh, that was supposed to be the chairman of the first session uh, as a uh, medical oncologist, uh, wasn't able to come today. It's too bad because we really tried hard to have different specialists from different areas, and not only breast cancer. I think that on cancer survivors, we've been talking on breast cancer for too long. Maybe it, I know it's important, but we need to start introducing some other specialities, and in this case, I think that colorectal cancer is starting to be a huge problem uh, in uh, cancer survivors, and uh, they need to, to get pregnant and deliver. So Dr. Montagut wasn't able to, to come today to, to be the chairman, so I'll be uh, uh, on the first session instead of Dr. Montagut. And also, uh, Dr. Moffa was uh, supposed to give the, the last talk on time to delivery, on egg donation and embryo adoption, and uh, I'll have the responsibility of, uh, well, uh, present her, her speech, and while well, it's uh, too bad that she's not here today to, to, to share the, his, his communication. So we will start with uh, Ms. Dr. Sarah Matthews, coming from the UK, uh, who's a senior fertility consultant in Portland Hospital uh, for Women and Children in London. Uh, well, uh, we know her and her patients for, we've been helping patients for, for many years and we know she has a nice experience on patients that want to get pregnant and deliver after cancer. So we gave her a very difficult talk about the perfect storm 
maternity delay, early cancer incidence, and survival rate increase. Please welcome Dr. 